Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Illinois Latino News Opinion Plus, a monthly series airing on Fridays. This is a space for our opinions, where we talk about current events and questions the Latino community is curious about. Today, we're joined by Joshua Gutierrez, Prevention, Health, and Education Manager at TPAN. Thank you for joining us this week, Joshua. Thank you for having me, Annabelle, and happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. This was an accident, I swear. I didn't mean to book you <laughs> for Pride I even Month. Wore my pride <laughs> shirt. I wore my little Pride shirt today. <laughs> so let's talk about TPAN. TPAN was founded 35 years ago with the intention of offering referral services for people affected by the HIV and AIDS um, during a very crucial time of the epidemic. What's changed since then? Wow, so much has changed. Um, you know, 35 years ago, back in 1987, when TPAN was founded, um, there weren't a lot of resources. There was a lot of stigma, um, a lot of fear. But what has changed is we now have incredibly effective uh, HIV medication available for people. Um, we have resources for people who are living with HIV, whether it be case management, whether it be housing, food, medical care, access to insurance. Um, I like to think that uh, marriage equality happened because of, you know, the history of HIV and AIDS and all the work that people put into it, you know, from grassroots organizations, you know, to politics, to funding, um, you know, we now have injectable uh, HIV medication, injectable PrEP medication. Uh, we've discovered that undetectable equals untransmittable. Um, and those are just some of the things, but we still have a lot of challenges ahead of us. Mm -hmm. You know, stigma, discrimination, access to care, access to, um, you know, services. And, you know, another really important thing is, you know, HIV has been decriminalized in the state of Illinois recently, which is major. That was a major win. So a lot has changed. There's still some stigma surrounding conversations like this, right? But a oh, lot absolutely. has changed for better. But um, mm -hmm. I do want to talk about PrEP, but I wanted to talk about you first. So how long have you been involved with the organization? So I've been with TPAN for about two years now. Um, I started during COVID. Um, I really didn't think COVID was going to be around for very long. <laughs> Um, but here we are, uh, two years plus into it. Uh, but it's been incredibly challenging. This, like for most people and a lot of organizations and businesses. Um, but I'm very proud of TPAN and how we've really stepped forward and really worked hard to provide, to continue to provide these life saving services to our clients and to our communities from, you know, offering virtual support groups, from offering virtual mental health therapy. Uh, we also delivered um, HIV home testing kits for free. Um, but yeah, it's been challenging, but you know, I've learned so much about not only myself, but about uh, my colleagues, my wonderful colleagues here at TPAN who are incredibly passionate, but also about our clients and just how resilient they really are. Obviously education is like a huge part of your role. And I feel like education is so important because knowledge is power. But unfortunately, in many Latino households, um, we just don't discuss things like sexuality and sexual health. Has that been your experience too? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, regardless of gender expression or you know sexuality expression or even age and even you know race or ethnicity, you know education is always it's just something that families don't really talk about. And mm -hmm. I know that today we're talking about you know Latino Latino community and in particular. So I really, I, I want to focus on that. So if you look, if you read the CDC data, you know, Latinos, Afro, Black Latinos are disproportionately affected by uh, HIV and STIs. And, you know, I just think it's sometimes it's a difficult conversation. I'm not a parent, so I, I can't relate to that. <laughs> and, you know, growing up, you know, I learned about sex from my friends. <laughs> um, you know, there was, you know, biology or sex ed in high school, but it wasn't really a lot. Right. Um, but also I just think that there's just, you know, a lot of misinformation out there. 
And I think it's important that people really get accurate information so that they can make the best health decisions for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think it's because parents don't care. I just think that maybe they don't know how to approach it or maybe they don't know how to talk about it. Um, but yeah, it's just like in the Latino community, it's like, you know, not to get into it too deep, but you know, there's a lot of, you know, you have to wait till you get married till you have sex in the Catholic community. <laughs> exactly. uh, and we don't talk about contraceptive, we, contraceptives. We don't talk about birth control. We don't talk about condoms. Um, but it's not, you know, specific to the Latino community. You know, it's, it's with all communities. Mm-hmm. But I think it's important when people do come into TPN and receive sexual wellness counseling and education, we really try to stress that people should invest in themselves and really like invest in your health. And we give you science-based, research-based information. Um, and we, we hope that we are giving you the tools to make the best health decisions for yourself. Right. So you're saying sexual health is just an extension of physical or mental health. Just something it's you all, it, yeah, it's all related. Mental health, physical health, sexual health, um, spiritual health for some people is very important as well. Um, so it's all related. One affects the other. Um, so it's very important. And, you know, as I was saying, it's like invest in yourself, you know. And I think sometimes, you know, we don't if we, we sometimes think if there's nothing wrong, then I'm OK. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So, you know, the three pillars that we really like to talk about in prevention at TPN is first education, mm-hmm. second is communication, and the third is prevention. And we really try to focus on those three pillars so that people have all the information that they need to take care of themselves and stay healthy of mind, body, and soul. Well, those three pillars are a great segue into the next topic I was going to bring up. I wanted to talk about PrEP um, because a lot of people I've talked to outside of the LGBT community don't really know what that is. And I think that it's important for people to know. So can you kind of explain that for us? Absolutely. Uh, Great question. Um, You're absolutely right. A lot of people still are unaware about PrEP. Even some medical providers I have found don't really know too much about PrEP. Um, So PrEP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis, and it is a pill that you take every day to prevent from acquiring HIV. Um, You have to take it every day and you do have to adhere to it for it to be 99.2% effective. Um, And basically what it does, it it protects your immune system and your T cells, your immune cells from being, you know, overtaken by the HIV virus. Um, It doesn't allow that process to happen. So it's a great tool. Um, I'm going to steal a quote from Dr. Maya Green and someone asked Dr. Green, like, who is, a, who is a good candidate for PrEP? And her answer to that was, anyone who has an immune system and is sexually active is a great candidate for PrEP. So obviously with, you know, men who have sex with men or, you know, same gender loving uh, sex partners, it's sort of geared more towards this community. But it's really for anyone, whether, you, however, you, you know, if you are having sex with more than one person, Uh, Whether you use condoms or don't use condoms, it's a great tool. Um, And, you know, we also need to talk about PEP, which is post-exposure prophylaxis, which is also another amazing tool. Um, If anyone believes that they may have been exposed to HIV, you have 72 hours to go to a hospital, an ER, to your medical provider to start on HIV medication or PEP medication. And you take it for a month and it arrests the, de- the development of the HIV virus to taking hold of your immune system. So that's something that's really important to know that a lot of people don't know about, whether it be PrEP or PEP. Uh, and PEP is another great tool for folks to know about. Yeah, thank you for explaining that because I had heard of PEP, but I didn't understand really what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and as far as PrEP, like, I think a lot of the marketing for it is geared towards the LGBT community, which is great, but I don't think that like many um, heterosexual people know that they can take it too. Absolutely. You know, and again, you know, if you look at the CDC data um, in 2020, uh, HIV transmission through heterosexual sex was 24%. So that's something that people don't really talk about. Mm -hmm. So it's something that people really need to know about. 
Definitely. And TPAN offers, also offers a risk reducing program called Lifeline. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So Lifeline is a program, it's free. Um, it's for people who are not living with HIV, so HIV negative, and it's a three session program where we, we really talk about, you know, what are your barriers to uh, getting on PrEP? Um, what is your relationship to sex? And normally you may have higher exposure to acquiring HIV, so it's a great program for people to take advantage of. It goes back to education. Absolutely, education. As you know, um, Illinois House Bill 4430 was sent to Governor Pritzker on April 20th of this year, after it was passed in both the Illinois House and the Senate. Um, that bill, for people who don't know, would allow access to PrEP and PEP by making them available in pharmacies without a prescription. Why is a bill like that important? This is great news. Um, it's going to be a game changer. Um, as I was saying, that people of color, BIPOC folks, are you know disproportionately affected by you know acquiring HIV. And a lot of the reasons is because there's barriers to acquiring it. Uh, they might live in areas where they might not be able to get health care. Um, so this tool will help people to acquire it. But we all know a tool is only effective if you have access to it. Right. So again, people will have access to it. But I just want to stress that it's very important that they still see a medical provider because they still have to make sure that you are HIV negative. Because if you were to seroconvert to positive, you could build resistance to the medication. So it's very important that you still see a doctor. They still have to do lab work. They still need to check your kidney levels. But this is just another great tool to get people started. Right. TPAN offers another program, and it's a syringe exchange program that offers free Narcan, free fentanyl test strips, which again are intended to reduce HIV transmission through needles and prevent accidental overdoses as well. But some people argue that programs like this encourage drug use. What do you think about that? <laughs> well, <clears throat> honestly, this is a passion of mine. And TPAN is very unique that we offer this serv these services at no cost, it's confidential. And data has shown and research has shown that it doesn't cause drug use. If anything, it protects the public health. It, it can arrest, halt, minimize you know, HIV acquisition, hepatitis C, overdose deaths. So again, it's, it's a great program that people have access to, especially a group of people who are already marginalized in our community and so here they could just come and they can receive their services, referrals uh, to Suboxone programs, methadone clinics, all other services that we provide here at TPAN. So is it kind of like a no questions asked kind of program where you just come and get the services and then? Yeah, you just walk in. Um, you don't even have to use. You could be a friend of someone who is using mm -hmm. um, and you're just picking up for them. And right. we, we do have a menu. You know, we do have to supply data you know, like how many syringes was there, you know, did they report an overdose death, but no name, no date of birth, no contact, it, locating information is shared with anybody. It, it is really confidential. Perfect. So that way more people would feel encouraged to go and use those services, right? Absolutely. You know, and one of the things we really stress here at TPN is that each and every single person who comes through our doors is treated with respect, with empathy and with grace. And, You'd be surprised how many people come in here and they're so afraid. Yeah. And then once they have experienced our services, they just come back. That's great. You guys offer so many good services. <laughs> I really want to ask really quickly about any upcoming events that you have um, sure. that you would like to share with us. Yes, we have the Ride for Life. It's our biggest uh, fundraising event. Um, you know, with any community-based organizations, we are funded. All our services are free. Every single one of our services are free. We turn nobody away. And so this, this event, Ride for Life, is a two-day bike ride uh, to Michigan and back. It's over the weekend. It's uh, coming up on the 18th and 19th of this month. Mm -hmm. uh, please visit our website at www.tpan.com. You can donate. Um, and it really, all the money goes to provide free services to our clients. And it's also a time to come together as a community and really honor the people that we have lost to HIV, you know, to, to HIV and AIDS. 
And it's a lot of fun, actually. And you can also, you can be a crew member. You can volunteer to be a crew member. It sounds really fun. Thank you so much, Joshua, for being our guest today. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me, Annabelle. Join us next time for another episode. For more information about our discussion today, check out our web story on ilatinonews.com and follow us on Twitter at ilatinonews. I'm Annabelle Rocha with Illinois Latino News Opinion Plus. See you next time.